We're going to introduce ourselves first, by the way. <laughs> All right, we are now live. Hello, everybody. I'm Chelsea. I'm Camille. And we are with Positive Futures, and we are going live today to talk to you guys about impulse control. It is something that we talk about a lot, but you might not know what it is or why it's important. So, Camille, would you like to start off with kind of defining what impulse control is? Sure. So, when we talk about impulse control, really what we mean is the ability to resist an urge or temptation or a desire. Mm -hmm. um, in, in a nutshell, it's really about um, being able to wait um, mm -hmm. for rewards for things that we want um, and not getting overly frustrated when we can't get access to the things that we want. Yeah. Um, and the same thing applies for our dogs as well. Uh, we can definitely teach them that they can wait for things and that um, being impulsive in general and just running towards anything that they want um, is not always the best option. Yeah. And so impulse control too, when, you know, when we are talking about training basic manners, sometimes people will struggle with teaching manners in certain environments or in certain locations because of their dog's inability to control their impulses. So if you had a dog that uh, is unable to control their impulses, talk about a few behaviors that they might see from their dog to help them identify, huh, yep, my dog does not have impulse control. Sure, <clears throat> so you know, pretty much common lack of self-control um, behaviors that we see are door dashing. Mm -hmm. So dogs that run out the door um, any chance they get. Counter surfing is also a big one. So dogs who snatch food um, or anything pretty much off of counters, um, stealing food in general, stealing items around the house. So if your pup runs around and finds your laundry basket and snatches the socks and starts running around, that's usually <laughs> A little bit of impulse control issue there. Yep. Um, some more common things too that we don't always associate with um, self control are pulling on the leash, right? Um, when you're out and about, your dog can't control their impulses and they want to go sniff and they want to go chase and they just uh, kind of disregard that they're attached to you and mm -hmm. whatever they want. Uh, barking can also be a lack of impulse control, especially mm -hmm. barking for attention. So that's usually yep. with dogs that don't have a lot of patience and don't tolerate being away from us or being ignored for long periods of time. Yep. Um, jumping on people, jumping on guests, that also is an excitement, lack of impulse control type of behavior. Yep. Um, and then generally two dogs that tend to have a hard time settling down. So busy buddies, dogs that kind of always have to do something and are always looking for stuff. Um, those are usually dogs that struggle yep. a bit with um, impulse control. Yep. Um, a couple more would be uh, dogs that like to chase small critters, right? <laughs> the desire to run after and chase something. Um, and then also kind of the um, the wanting of to put everything in their mouth. So if you're yeah. walking down the street and your dog wants to pick up all the leaves and the sticks and, you know, any treat that drops to the ground or any uh, tissue or paper towel that drops to the ground. So them wanting to pick those things up the moment they see them. Um, so having a dog that can control their impulses is important not just to give you guys some sanity right because living with a dog that is very impulsive can be really stressful for the people that have to deal with it um, but it's also a big safety concern you know if i am sitting here at, at the counter and i drop something that i'm cooking with like chocolate or an onion um, or even uh, earlier camille you mentioned an aspirin bottle you know if we drop something that is toxic to them and the moment i drop it they pick it up that could be a huge issue um, or even those dogs that like to counter surf maybe I'm not klutzy maybe I can keep things on the counter but my dog comes up and helps themselves to you know a big turkey that would certainly cause some GI upset um, or even something like pancreatitis so it's definitely a safety concern on top of you know just teaching our dogs some manners so um, what are some easy exercises that people could do with their dog uh, to help start to teach them some impulse control? Sure. So the, the nice, I mean, I would say the most basic and easiest way to work on some impulse control is teaching your dog a sit stay or down stay um, that helps keep them in place and away from um, distractions. So sit stay, you know, when you have people coming in the house. Um, having them sit, stay away from the door is useful in preventing that either door dashing, running out in the street, um, or just uh, tackling your guests as they walk in the door. Yep. Like one of my dogs likes to do. <laughs> huh, I haven't met that one. <laughs> 
Uh, so those are nice, you know, makes it easy. It's pretty simple. Pretty much just either sit or, or down and just stay there and don't move. Um, yep. You know, building direction can be yeah. difficult. But yeah. And that's a nice one too, because that one's really versatile. There are so many different environments where, you know, a lack of impulse control could be learned. You know, they could learn to control those impulses with a, a basic behavior, like a sit, stay or a down stay. So that's definitely one that I like to reward. Um, another good one would be leave it. You know, if our mm -hmm. dog likes to pick things up, you know, we can deter that by teaching them to not go near it. And when I teach leave it, I do like to teach the dog to give me eye contact instead of going after the item, because then if I have attention from them, it's really easy for me to, you know, ask them to stay or to back up or to pick the item up because that attention is on me instead of the item. Um, and just a quick tidbit for you guys remember that leave it and drop are two different behaviors so if the dog already has something in their mouth that is drop we want them to release the item if they are looking at something or darting towards something that's when we are going to use leave it and we do have um, a little tutorial on our youtube page that does start the process of teaching leave it using food in your hands so if you guys want to start working on that behavior that's a good thing to do um, so sit stays or down stays and then leave it. Those are good skills to do. But remember that impulse control is like a muscle. You have to work it out consistently in order for it to get stronger. And remember too, that every time you work it out, it's gonna get easier and easier for your dog. So one thing I really like to do is reward throughout the day. You know, mm -hmm. instead of always setting aside five minutes of training in the morning, five minutes of training in the evening, try to get in the habit, especially because you guys are home right now. Put treats in your pockets, keep your bait bag on your or your treat bag on your hip so that throughout the day, if you see your dog doing something you like, you can reward them. And that even goes beyond just working on impulse control, you know, but you have lots of opportunities throughout the day to use even your dog's meal instead of having them, um, you know, eat out of a bowl or eat out of a puzzle. I got a, a nice text message from a client this morning with their food bowl set up on the table and they were rewarding the dog for laying down next to them. So that, I mean, not only is that working the dog for their meal, but they're rewarding all kinds of good behavior there. They're rewarding quiet instead of barking for attention. They're rewarding laying down instead of jumping up and grabbing that bowl. So they're teaching manners that are real life and they're working on impulse control. So I really liked that. And that's something easy that you guys could do. Just use dinner, you know, stick it in a treat bag and you've got it with you all day long to reward, reward good behavior from them. Um, another good one is settle. So Camille, can you talk to us a little bit about how settle could be used to work on impulse control and why it would be important? Yeah, settle is a really nice longer duration behavior. So settle really means go lay down. Um, usually we like to use a specific spot for them to go lay down. So we use a mat or bed um, or place. Um, and that's really nice for longer duration behavior. So when you're cooking a meal, when you're eating a meal and you want your dog to just kind of hang out, with you but not on top of you um, settle is a really good time to use that yeah. um, and just rewarding your dog for staying on their spot mm -hmm. while you're doing something else um, also really nice to use when you have well right now we can't have people over but when you usually do have people over for a yep. party that's a nice way to have your dog still kind of involved with what's going on mm -hmm. um, but not in the middle of the action getting themselves in trouble or helping themselves yes. through food on the table. Yeah, exactly. And and even beyond food, I'm actually in my downtime, I am working on a sewing project. And so I have little pieces of fabric all over my living room because um, my husband's in my office. Um, and so I've got little pieces of fabric all over the place. And Lennon thinks that it's super fun to come up and grab the little pieces of fabric and just walk away with them. And he doesn't eat them or shred them. He just takes them away. And so I've been using settle on a mat to keep him a little bit further out of the area so that I can do my project without him being underfoot. And so it's a nice way, like you said, to kind of just keep them with you, but not on top of you. And it helps keep them safe. So that's a really nice one to do. And every once in a while, I'll just throw a treat over to him for maintaining that position. Um, and while, I, while I'm working on settle with them, I always make sure, especially if I'm doing duration, that they have something else to do. So generally mm -hmm. I'll give them um, a bone or a bully stick or an antler or even frozen Kong to kind of help keep them stationary and, and make that process a little easier and less stressful for them. Um, and then of course, there are so many different ways that our dogs 
might struggle with impulse control. Um, generally speaking, if we are taking a look at our dog, there are more things that we need to teach than we have time for. So when you are addressing your impulse control needs, don't forget about management, right? So management is anything that you can use, any tool that's going to prevent the unwanted from happening. So Camille, you talked about jumping up on guests. Management could certainly be used either by itself or in conjunction with training to help prevent running out the door or jumping up on people. So you could set up a little baby gate around your front door so that your dog is unable to reach the door. Your guest can walk in. And then again, that baby gate or the X pen helps prevent the dog from reaching your guests. So you've prevented door dashing and you've prevented jumping up on people. Um, you could also use a leash in that situation. So if you know that the door is gonna be opening, you know that someone is gonna be walking in, you could clip a leash to your dog's harness and by holding that leash or tethering them to you, you're preventing them from, again, darting out the door and jumping up on people. Now, talk to us with that setup real quick, Camille. How would you add in training if we were gonna use that management in conjunction with a training plan? Yes, yeah, so that's a really good question because a lot of times, you know, when we use management, it can be a little bit difficult to actually do the training yep. uh, because remember, management is useful to prevent bad behavior, but our dogs don't really learn anything yeah. from it. We yep. just have to train um, for the behavior that you want. And so that's a really good time to think of the behavior you want your dog to do instead of jumping or door dashing. Mm -hmm. um, and that's also a really nice spot for a sit stay, right? Yeah. Because if you're sitting on the floor, you can't run out the door. Yep. So usually what I like to do with doors specifically is to have my dog on leash. Usually if I'm by myself behind a baby gate or expense, so it's yep. really easier for me to control mm -hmm. um, because I have a big dog and she weighs a lot. Yep. Um, so Usually I'll have her set up, I'll ask her for a sit stay as I open the door and I'll reward my dog for holding the sit stay behind the x -Pen as the door is open yes. so that we're rewarding not running out the door and also rewarding some calmness as the door opens because that's pretty exciting for most dogs. Mm -hmm. um, they know their front door leads them to walks, which are exciting and that all the people that visit come through the front door so they yeah. can expect the excitement. Um, and then once we have that, you can have your guests come in and then keep rewarding your dog for holding that nice sit stay. Yep. And once your dog is a bit calmer, so when people typically just settle and there's not all of that movement around the door, I'll release my dog to go say hi. And while she's still on leash, I can easily guide her away if she gets a little too excited and starts. Yeah. Talking. Yep. And remember too, guys, that, you know, a lot of people think that their dog knows a behavior when they really don't. I know we are all very eager to get that nice sit stay as the dog walks in the door, but there's a lot of prep that has to happen before your dog is able to use that skill in that high excitement situation. Mm -hmm. So you need to do lots of training setups on sit stays, you know, where each, each session, it's getting just a little bit harder and people have a hard time with really splitting down those distractions. So we might start with a sit stay in my living room with nothing else going on, super quiet. Then I might do a repetition uh, where I'm practicing sit stays and I turn the TV on, right? A little bit of extra noise and a little bit of motion on that screen. And then I might do sit stays inside where I'm holding a toy because that's a little bit different and that, that changes that picture. And then I might do sit stays on my back porch. They spend a lot more time there. It's usually a little less exciting for them out back than it is out front. And then finally, we would move out front. But remember, your goal is success. We want your dog to be successful, meaning that eight out of 10 repetitions, they got it. It's easy. They can do it. And each time you practice in those short two to three minute sessions, it's only getting just a little bit harder so that that way you're really strengthening that behavior. So with that door setup. I might practice a sit stay on leash behind a, a baby gate with a bowl of food down instead of a human, right? And then I might put a toy there and then I might practice opening the door and it might take me 35 repetitions to get that door all the way open because I'm breaking it down into short little, oh, touch the doorknob and then touch the doorknob and crack it, right? So that you're practicing lots and lots of reps. And if you do it that way, your dog is gonna be successful and you're building up such a nice history of reinforcement that the dog goes, oh, I got this, sit, stay, I can do that. Instead of setting them up for failure and putting them in that position before they're ready. 
So management can certainly be used in that set in that setup um, by itself and in conjunction with training. Of course, our goal is to be able to do that skill without management. Um, but remember that there might be certain things that you have to just use management with for now. And that's totally OK. So one example is the crate. And we're not using crates probably a whole bunch right now because a lot of us are spending a lot of time at home. But lots of people crate their dogs when they leave the house. Mm -hmm. And that prevents them from practicing stealing of socks and stealing of food off the counters, right? So that management prevents them. But again, management doesn't teach them what we do want. So we could certainly crate the dog when we leave forever, you know, And but remember that when the dog is out and with you, you do need to then be rewarding chewing on their own things and stuff like that. So... Lots of good info here. Um, let's go through, if you don't mind, Camille, let's go through an example uh, problem behavior or example of a lack of impulse control. And let's go through how a sit stay, rewarding throughout the day, a settle and management could all come into play. So a common one that people deal with is counter surfing or stealing of food and items off of our countertops. So how would you use, or what is one way, because there certainly are lots and lots of ways, but what is one way you would use a sit stay to help uh, reduce the problem of counter surfing? Sure, so I like to use um, sit stays when I'm in the kitchen, especially when I'm moving food around, because that can be really difficult for dogs if they're following you around and you have a plate, a bowl of food, and you're moving from one spot to the other, that they'll just, oh, I can help myself. Let me help myself to that, that looks yummy. <laughs> I know, that um, so that is a really nice time to ask for a sit stay. Mm -hmm. um, and you can build that into small pieces too. So you can start um, by having your dog sit stay a few feet away from the counter. And I might uh, be here and I might just shift one step to the right, reward my dog for holding the sit stay. Yep. And then gradually adding more step and then maybe taking one step away from the counter and rewarding my dog. Um, until I'm able to build that nice duration where I can move around the kitchen um, pretty easily with my dog holding her sit stay. And I, I practice that too with non food items. So, you know, yeah. or things that aren't as interesting. So, you know, a Powerade bottle, you could practice that concept with something that's less interesting to them so that when you increase the distraction of adding food in, you your dog would already kind of go, oh, okay, we've, we've done this game before. I, I know this game. Um, if I'm doing it, in a live moment, Camille, and I've, I'm about to pick up food and walk away, at what point during that do you recommend that people ask their dog for a sit-stay? Is it once um, they're already yeah. with the food or before they pick it up? Yeah, I like to be proactive, um, especially with dogs who are kind of new to the behavior because, you know, again, impulse control is hard. So the more your dog can be prepared and calm, the easier it is. So usually I'll ask my dog to sit-stay before I start moving. And that way, too, I can kind of gauge how quiet she is. So sit-stay. I pick up the bowl without moving. If she's holding her sit stay, then okay, I can move a little bit, right? Yeah. If I pick up the food without moving and she's already up and what are you doing? Then obviously she's not ready for me to start moving around the kitchen with the bowl. Um, and you know, that's when you could use management so that if your dog isn't quite to that level yet, mm -hmm. I might use a leash and a tether so that my dog is tethered to um, her place or a heavy piece of furniture in the kitchen so that she can't get to me even if she breaks her stay that way we still kind of prevent her learning that oh if i break my stay i can just go and help myself exactly exactly um and for counter surfing how would you reward your dog throughout the day to teach them Im impulse control around food in the kitchen so what i love to do with counter surfing specifically is rewarding my dog for four feet on the floor when there's food around because that's pretty much the concept you want them to understand is that when there's food around if you have all four feet on the floor, you can get a treat, you can get a piece of food. Uh, if your feet come off the floor, no food. Yep. Um, so a lot of times, um, you know, throughout the day, uh, alpacas in the kitchen, but I'll also practice around the house a lot. I like especially around the dining table and coffee tables, because that's yep. usually when you have a lot of food and temptation to steal. Mm -hmm. uh, an easy way to do that, same thing is to have, um, a bowl of food and usually I'll start with something really low value that's kind of boring to my dog like her daily kibble so nothing exciting 
um, and I'll set the bowl down. And if we have four feet on the floor, she gets a treat. Yeah. If she gets a little too close to the food or starts getting excited, oh, the bowl of food gets removed completely and we kind of walk away. So yeah. that it's easy to get short little reps throughout the day. Yeah. Um, it's easy to practice once you can move to higher value when I move my food. So I made myself a sandwich and I'm moving from the kitchen to the dining room. I'll reward my dog for coming with me without jumping. Mm -hmm. um, and I sit down and start eating my food. Again, she'll get rewarded for just being patient and keeping all four feet on the floor. Yeah. And remember too, all four on the floor is a sit, a down or a stand. All of those behaviors are better than jumping up on the counter and jumping up on you. And a lot of the times when I'm doing my rewarding throughout the day, I'm not necessarily asking them to do something. I like to wait until they offer the correct behavior on their own because then we're just rewarding their good decision. And if they go, huh, well, that was a good decision that worked, then they're going to keep doing that. They'll offer that more and more for me. So whenever possible, you know, I like to wait them out in certain low distraction, low kind of arousal situations so that I can teach them to make those good decisions on their own. And then I'm not having to do a bunch of micromanaging. Um, and Sydney, we do see your question. We will get to that in just a minute. Thank you for contributing. Um, so with again, with our counter surfing uh, example, Camille, how would settle or place be beneficial? I love to use that own place in the kitchen. That's actually my number one practice spot is the kitchen. So yeah. um, I have a nice roomy kitchen too. So my dog has her permanent place in there. So there's always a bed in the kitchen. Um, and the way I love to start it is to have the place a little further away from the counter. If yeah. you can, you have sometimes space is an issue, but because it's easier if your dog is six to seven feet away versus being right next to where the food is, especially if you have better fingers like I do and you drop stuff around the kitchen. Or you turn your back for one second and your dog is super speedy. and yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if they're a little bit further away, it tends to be a little bit easier. Yep. Um, and I'll usually start just in the kitchen without any food around at all. Um, just, just a bed. My dog goes to her bed. She offers going to the bed and I'll click and treat. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'll just wait her out a little bit. And usually um, within a few seconds, they'll offer a sit or down because they're just stuck in one place. So I might as well just lay down yep. and I'll and reward that. And then I'll practice moving around the kitchen. Again, there's no food yet. I really just want to build that initial duration of if you hang out on your mat in the kitchen, you get cookies. Yep. And what you can even do in the beginning stages is close all the doors to your kitchen so your dog is stuck in the kitchen with you so they can't really go anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And I'll let my dog do whatever she wants, but I'll just keep dropping treats onto her plate so that every time she wanders to her bed, oh my God, there's food. Yep. And then that spot in the kitchen becomes really interesting and valuable, way yep. more interesting than anything else. And then from there, I can start adding a little bit higher distraction. Okay, if I open the fridge, mm -hmm your place and if you do you get a cookie if you get up well up to bed the fridge the fridge closes and you didn't get um your piece of food yeah so one thing to remember is that dogs are um pretty much self-motivated they do what works for them and they're also very efficient so they'll do whatever requires the least amount of effort to yep. get a reward so really what we're doing here is telling our dogs the least amount of effort is done on your place if you just don't move if you just stay in one spot the food will come to you you don't yep. have to spend all the effort of running and jumping and snatching food off the table and then having to run away. It's really as simple as you just stay put and you'll get food. And when you're consistent, dogs get that really, really quickly. Yeah, absolutely. And consistency is absolutely key. So the more times you can find to reward that same concept, the faster your dog is going to catch on. And if you're in the kitchen and let's say I'm cooking like human food and I don't want to be dipping my hands in dog food and then having to rewash, remember you can always just cut up a little bit of, you know, human grade chicken or cheese or carrots or whatever your dog likes that's human food. So then you're not having to wash your hands back and forth between reps. Um, but I, I do, I love settle on a mat in the kitchen. And I love what you just said about dogs being um, opportunistic and about them being, um, you know, efficient. They're going to do what works and they're going to do what is easiest that works. And so we as people have to set up this environment and teach mm -hmm. them the best thing for them to work. So imagine that you are going to the grocery store and you always take the same route every single time and it takes you 15 minutes. And all of a sudden on that road, they're doing construction and they're, it's now going to take you 45 minutes. Well, you're not going to spend three times as long on the road 
you're going to find a shortcut, right? A lot of us use ways and that gets you from point A to point B as fast as possible. We don't want to waste time. We want to get there quickly and efficiently. So if they're doing construction for a year on that road, you're going to keep taking that shortcut because the shortcut works and it got you what you wanted to get there fast. And our dogs are gonna do the same thing. They're going to do what works. They're going to do what earns them that reinforcement. So we have to figure out a way to go, hi, this is better for you. Mm -hmm. Look, cookies fall from the sky when you're over there on that mat. So if you wanted to just use management, we weren't gonna do management in conjunction with training. We just wanted to manage counter surfing. What are, what are some few options for people? So the easiest is to keep your dog out of the kitchen altogether um, and that would be closing doors or having baby gates um, in place so that you can um, just not have the temptation at all. Mm -hmm. uh, another one that's kind of in between management and training is having your dog in an x pen in the kitchen yeah. so that, again, they're managed. They can't get to the counter even if they tried, but you're still able to kind of reward the concept of, hey, if you hang out in one spot, you might get cookies. Mm -hmm. um, and another one is using tethers. So yep. you can put the harness on your dog leash and then attach the leash to um, either the wall if you have a hook there mm -hmm. or a heavy piece of furniture so that, again, the range of motion of your dog is limited so that can't get to the counters and help themselves um, but they're still practicing being in the kitchen with you and kind of getting settled when you're in there and remember too that if you're trying to eliminate a behavior it's important that you prevent it from happening mm -hmm. all the time so if you have a dog that's a counter surfer your dog needs to also be prevented from getting in the kitchen and getting on the counters even when you're not home so again you know setting up X pens or baby gates to block off the kitchen area, closing doors if you can, or if your dog is crate trained, putting them in a crate, preventing them from having the opportunity to rehearse the behavior, whether you are there or not. Um, so those are some ideas on how to resolve um, an impulsive behavior of counter surfing with using a sit stay, rewarding behavior throughout the day, using settle or place, and then using management. Um, so those are easy things that you can do every single time to help teach your dog that other things like four on the floor or being on their place are better. So let's go ahead and head over to a question. We've got a nice question here from Sydney. Um, you may be planning to discuss this, but with barking for attention, um, what management would be the best thing? Um, or what would you teach? So. Um, for management, that's pretty challenging, right? Because if they're barking for attention and they have access to you, then they have the opportunity to practice the behavior. Um, one thing easily that comes to mind in terms of management and barking for attention, a lot of dogs will bark for attention if they're kind of in limbo. So if they're like between activities um, or in the evening, if you're, you've, you know, you've been playing with them, you've been training, and now it's your time to kind of sit and chill. Dogs have a hard time kind of turning off. So giving a puzzle would be one way that you could use another tool to help prevent the behavior. Something like a Kong is also going to reward them for being quiet. It's going to reward them for being stationary and relaxed. Um, so that would be one, one management tool. Um, can you think of anything else management wise, Camille? No, because I would say, you know, management wise, if you create them or pen them and you're still in a the room, they're probably going to bark at you. Or even if you, you know, you're still going to get that barking behavior, I would say food puzzles or a game, something that you, is going to engage your dog and keep their mind occupied so that you don't have to keep them occupied. Yeah. Uh, something like a, a bully stick would also work or a trachea, a raw bone, something for them to kind of sit and chew on and be active. Um, and remember that we want to keep them busy, but you also want to think about what you're doing. So if you're planning on, you know, taking them for a walk in 20 minutes, you could totally give them something like a wobbler that they're going to be super active and bounce around with. But if you're trying to sit down and watch TV or read a book, you probably want to be promoting quieter behavior. So something to sit and chew or sit and lick would like a Kong or a bully stick would be a better option there for management. And then in terms of teaching things, so I would probably teach like a turn off signal so that you can say, hey, all done. And they can they know what that means. They know it means you're no longer going to be paying attention so that they can be a little bit independent. Um, I would also teach settle on a mat mm -hmm. you know, so that they learn how to be in the same room with you, um, but remain quiet and relaxed. 
Um, you ask about a sit stay. You could do a sit stay. Um, I, if you're going to do stay, I'd prefer down just because it's a little bit more relaxed and they can maintain it easier for longer periods of time. But I probably would prefer settle just because it's a little more comfortable for them and it's kind of the, hey, you hang out over here. We're not necessarily doing something, but you can do your own thing. Yeah, I would say the same with a with a stay. I usually we use stay for temporary, so short, very short durations. Because when you're using stay, a lot of times your dog is still in active working mode, so they're waiting for the next thing they're going to do. Um, so you're not necessarily going to get relaxation um, when you're doing just to stay. Mm -hmm. So settle for me is a better option of just relax, hang yeah. out. Nothing's going to happen if you just hang out. You get to stay with me if you start getting, uh, you know excited or obnoxious, then um, you'll probably get just removed to get a little time out. Yeah. Yep. And remember too, that that's something if you're experiencing it frequently, um, you could um, certainly use management in conjunction with training for that, you know, rewarding settle. But if your dog can't maintain settle, putting a little X pen around them so that they're other options are decreased a little bit, giving them a better chance to do the correct behavior. Um, and if, again, if we're experiencing a lot of attention seeking behavior, you know, multiple times throughout the day, I always like to just take a quick moment and think to myself, have your needs been met today? Have I given you exercise? Have I given you training? Do you need food? Have you gone to the bathroom recently? Because sometimes what we perceive as like obnoxious attention seeking behavior could be, hey, I need something. My needs have not been met. And remember that we're their primary caregivers. So, you know, if I think to myself, gosh, you're being super vocal, which I too have vocal dogs. They are Malamutes. They like to woo at me for, for everything. And so if, you know, my oldest is our most vocal and if he starts woo, 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 I kind of, okay. Wait a minute. Have your before I tell you to knock it off and go lay down. Have your needs been met? And then I okay. Well, you know you haven't really had exercise today. Let's go for a quick walk to satisfy those needs, and then it's going to be easier for him to go chill out afterwards. So adding a little exercise beforehand can be super helpful if you're experiencing attention-seeking behavior at a specific time of day. And I think a lot of people get that attention-seeking behavior at night when mm -hmm. they're trying to kind of sit down and chill. So not a bad idea to just add in a walk and a little training session before that, um, you know, just to kind of help take the edge off and make it easier for our dogs to do the right thing. So awesome. Thank you for contributing that. That's a good question. I know that a lot of our a lot of our clients are, are dealing with attention-seeking behavior, probably a little more now <laughs> that we're working from home. Um, we did do another Facebook Live specific to some problems that people might be experiencing uh, due to staying at home in, for social distancing. So that might be helpful for some of you too if you are experiencing a lot of attention-seeking behavior now, and maybe that's not normal for you. So that could be helpful too. Um, so Camille, impulse control. If people are looking for a little bit more impulse control, you are actually starting an online group class for us, which is going to be awesome. Talk to us a little bit about the class and what people can expect from it. Yeah, yeah, we're starting an impulse control online class starting today. Um, and the class is really good for pretty much any age dog. So you can take it if you have puppies, teenagers, older dogs. Mm -hmm. I would say especially if you have a teenager right now, you definitely want to work on that because they yeah. uh, tend to struggle a lot with impulse control. Um, and impulse control also is really nice when you're stuck inside and you don't have as much opportunity to get outside and exercise because yeah. it does provide really good mental stimulation for your dog. Mm -hmm. That's going to help get them nice and tired mentally and relax inside the house. Yeah. Um, and so for our impulse control class, we're pretty much going to break down impulse control into a concept where right? we want to teach our dogs um, that being patient gets them access to the things that they want. And we're going to yep. play for different games um, that are impulse control games every week. And we're gonna gradually make things harder. So we're gonna add distance, we're gonna add duration, we're gonna add some difficulty, changing the value of the rewards that we use so that we can kind of work out that impulse control muscle, right? Yeah. Like Chelsea said before, impulse control is very much like a muscle. You do have to work it out to make it stronger. You can't um, go from you know sitting on the couch all day long for three months to lifting 80 pounds over your head. Yep. Um, and neither can our dogs. So we do want to build that skill incrementally yep. um, by increasing distraction so that we can also apply this in the real world with real life distractions because it's great that my dog can leave hot dogs in my kitchen. But if she snatches the first chicken bone she finds on the street, 
uh, you know, it's not really um, worth it. So we really yeah. want to do those things into consideration and build that nice, strong impulse control in different contexts and scenarios and environments that our dogs are yeah. really good at just, oh, okay, wait, I'm not supposed to do that. What am I supposed to do instead? And they kind of check in with us and they can, can I get it? Or should I do something else? Yeah. Um, and that's really useful. Yeah, and, and like Camille said, it's a great time for you to be working on impulse control because you're gonna tire your dog out with these with these brain games. You don't have to go a whole bunch of places and run them five miles to get that exercise to keep them quiet. But you're also spending a ton of time at home with your dogs right now. Yeah. So a few of my clients have been messaging me, you know, expressing some stress about their dog's behavior. And so this is a perfect time to work on it, not only to tire them out, but to also make it easier for you to live with them at home. Right. That's that's our goal. We want we want living with our dogs to be enjoyable and tackling impulse control is definitely something that you could do. Yeah. Um, go Sorry. ahead. It's also a nice um, thing to work on with dogs who already have training experience. Mm -hmm. So even if your dog has manners and is um, you know pretty well behaved yeah. because we're going to add complexity and you can kind of, you know, move the games around to make it as hard as you yeah. want dog that even if you have a dog that's um, already pretty savvy about that kind of stuff mm -hmm. uh, definitely make it more challenging and interesting for them I know my dog I've you know as I was doing some of the tutorials and videos some of the things she's done a million times so they were really easy but mm -hmm. some of the new stuff or when I try to make it harder you know for her it was like ah oh, wait a minute this is tough yeah um, and she has a lot of experience being trained so it, it's been really nice for me too to see that okay even a dog who's very experienced with those things and kind of understands the concept, you can still kind of make them think about it and keep practicing that impulse control. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I love what you said there about it being different than manners. And even if you have manners or have done basic obedience with your dogs, even advanced obedience, this is a whole nother ball game because yeah. impulse control, we're really trying to teach the dog to make better decisions, both when we cue or when we ask them and on their own. And it's yeah. super, super helpful. So, um, applicable to all skill levels. Um, and Brittany said that she she took our impulse control class. She took it in person. Um, that was the first time we met her and her sweet boy. Um, and she said it was super helpful. And that's awesome to hear. You know, we, we certainly love feedback on our classes. Um, and, and impulse control is one that I think is overlooked by many people. And once they do start tackling impulse control, they really, really go, oh my gosh, what a difference I'm seeing in my dog. You know, they're mature. They're not reacting to everything. And that's our goal. You know, again, it makes it easier for, for us to, to live with them. And these online classes that we're doing right now, um, impulse control being one of them, they are a very good price um, for the amount of material that you're getting. You get video tutorials, you'll get weekly office hours helping you troubleshoot and work through all these skills. Um, and then a really cool component is that now clients are encouraged and required to prop their phones up and hit record. And it's super helpful. Um, in our online challenge group right now, a lot of our, our people are doing that. And they're like, oh my gosh, I haven't done this forever. And they're noticing all the little things they're doing. And so being self-reflective like that and, and figuring out what you can do to change is super helpful in making you a better trainer. Because remember, the better you are, the easier it's going to be for your dog. So awesome. Um, any any last thoughts on impulse control from you, Camille? Nope. I mean, that was pretty much, you know, um, my spiel as to, yeah. you know, um, it's a really useful skill. And again, you know, like you were saying, um, a lot of people don't realize that some of the most obnoxious, annoying behaviors that their dog um, exhibit are actually kind of rooted in the lack of impulse control. Yeah. And so once you start working on that, a lot of the stuff just that, ah. Oh, Oh, I didn't know that was the, that was the root of the problem, and now yeah. it's all gone. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so, if you guys again, we'll be kind of monitoring this for the next twenty four hours or so. If you guys have are were unable to tune in live with us, but have some some thoughts or quick questions, um, you're welcome to kind of post them on this after. And we hope that you will join us in the impulse control class. I have uh, looked over the material that Camille's created, and it's pretty awesome. You guys are going to have a great time with it. So, uh, more information. It, about the class is on our website with links to register for it. And it is uh, open enrollment, so you can join at any time. And it's work at your own pace. So if you have a lot of work going on right now, but want to take advantage of this good price, you totally can. And just, you know, a couple minutes here and there. 
um, working through these exercises and you'll notice a big difference in your dog's ability to control their impulses. So we'd love to hear from you guys. Feel free to tag us in Instagram posts and show us how you guys are working on your dog's impulse control. And we hope that this has inspired you to practice a few exercises today in your downtime with your dog to tire their brain and get them controlling themselves. All right, guys, have a wonderful day. We'll see you later. Bye.